The story begins with the introduction of the Runcandle clan, a powerful ruling clan that dominates over half of the world. The members of this clan possess extraordinary talent and powerful bodies, making them strong enough to rule with domination, battle, plunder, and possession. The protagonist, Jin Runcandle, is the youngest son born into this clan, which he thought would guarantee him a successful and glorious future. However, during a selection ritual that foretells a child's future, Jin selects the Patriarch's sword, which marks him as the child that grabbed the fate of the Patriarch. He continued to think that his future would only be full of success and fame from then on, as the clan members began thinking of him highly after the election ended. This selection caught the attention of the whole Runcandle clan, for him selecting the Barisada. However, Jin later discovered that he had no talent for swordsmanship as time passed, which was considered a dishonor and embarrassment toward his own clan. Jin was considered the least talented Runcandle ever as he was far below the standards of a run candle, and was bullied by his own brothers for his lack of talent occasionally. One day when he was training on his own in the training grounds, two of his brothers came around and started bullying him altogether. They didn't stop after noticing his mental or physical condition, and even shamed him for studying swordsmanship theory, as it led to them breaking the only wooden sword that he was given to do training with. Despite this, Jin remained determined to gain his family's acknowledgement through hard work as he wanted to forget everything that happened to him till then, thinking that he would make a comeback to carry the flag of his own clan. But nothing goes right for him from then on as he ends up hitting the bottom of the sea with the last step done by his family. However, he was expelled from the clan due to his lack of talent and only decided to go away unharmed as he tried his best to meet their requirements. It was only then that he met his master, who revealed to him that he possessed a talent for magic, which is forbidden in the Runcandle family. After three years of studying magic, Jin was able to connect with Mana and was summoned by Soldrit, the god of shadows, who offered him a contract that allowed him to use shadow spiritual power and nullify curses. Soldrit revealed that Jin had been cursed with the Blade of Illusion in his childhood, which suppressed his talent for swordsmanship but he was now relieved of the curse with the help provided by him. Soldrit also swore that no curses would ever be able to harm him ever again from then on, as he would continue to watch over him with curious eyes and authority. Jin believed that his hard work was finally paying off as soon as he started witnessing the result with his own eyes, but he was then attacked and left badly injured, begging for his master and Soldrit to save him as he continued to groan in pain under rocks and pebbles, while his blood continues to spread on the ground painting it dark red. However, no one came to his aid, and the only question that came to his mind was why he was given a chance when it would end this way by proving everything useless. Suddenly, he found himself in a situation where his clan members were looking at him, and he realized that he had time traveled back to when he was one year old. Therefore, he chose the Barasada sword in the trial once again. But this time, he does so of his own will while dreaming of the glory of his future, which he could not achieve in his previous life because of his untimely demise. The Runcandle's clan members were surprised when Jin picked Barisada in the ritual, as none of the children had chosen it before. Jin's father ordered him to move to the Storm Castle, where children were traditionally expected to stay until they turned ten. Six years later, it was discovered that it is in their tradition for children to stay in Storm Castle until they turn ten. Jin still had three years left to leave the castle when he saw a bird getting killed by his brothers, who only targeted him by doing that, as he knows that the only one who could have done this inside the Storm Castle was his brothers. After coming face to face with his brothers, they continued to mock him by asking if he was going to cry. Jin remembered how his brothers became infamous murderers in their past life, but he got angry that they killed an innocent bird just to mess with him. He realized he had chosen Barasada to avoid his brothers, but they still found a way to torment him. When his brother attacked him and told him to quit, Jin had to retaliate and prepare for the consequences they were about to face. However, Jin stopped their attack with his hand and told them they were quite noisy 
and should just shut the hell up. Jin beat both of them and warned them to stay out of his sight. Khan, a man who witnessed the fight, offered to take Jin's brothers to the hospital in that instant. However, Jin had some other plan and ordered Khan to follow him outside instead. He buried the dead bird and left his brothers in the rain to suffer, believing they needed to learn the severity of their actions. As they returned, Khan suspected that Jin had used forbidden mana energy that shouldn't exist around the Rung Candle clan family during the fight and felt obligated to report it to the clan patriarch immediately. Jin, who had used spiritual power rather than mana, knew that Khan would report him but was not worried. His contract with Soldrit, a powerful entity, protected him from the bladed illusion curse, which is still valid in his new life. Jin understood that he had to meet his father and face the consequences of his actions, not expecting what was about to happen. As Khan reported to the clan patriarch, the assembly of the night was ordered immediately, and everyone marched towards the castle to confront Jin about it, including Jin's siblings. Because of the sheer urgency related to his children staying in the castle, on their way, Mary and Diffus Runcandle are traveling together when Mary asks her brother about a sudden assembly. Diffus responds that it might be about something other than the Tona brothers, who are scheduled to arrive in a year, and that their father might go meet their little brother. Mary wonders why their little brother is so important, to which Diffus reminds her that he was chosen to wield the Patriarch's sword. Mary seems to forget this fact, but she thinks their little brother must be useful for their father to visit him personally, even though Lunar Run Candle isn't bothered much about the situation. Mary seems to be thinking deeply about it, as it may affect their future endeavors in the clan. Meanwhile, Jin is thinking about Khan, who has reported seeing himself using unknown abilities similar to magic. Jin believes that Khan is inflexible and would have reported exactly what he saw, without assuming what it really was in the first place. Jin thinks that his father is coming to see his power for himself, and to see if Jin will be able to help the clan prosper in the future, as he could work as a future asset in the clan with his newfound abilities. When Jin's father, Siron Runcandle, enters the castle with his siblings and the guardian knights, he calls the Tona brothers named Haytona and Daytona first, and asks them what mistake they made that led to the sudden quarrel. They respond that they did nothing wrong, and that it was Jin who attacked them first while using unknown abilities similar to magic. They also mention that magic is forbidden in their clan with an evil smile, so Jin faces grave consequences. Mary decides to comment during the confrontation, but his father silences her before she can finish her sentence. Their father, Chiron Runcandle, tells them that they will not be able to survive in the Runcandle clan if they continue to act like incompetent children. He then calls for Jin to come forward to explain his acts in the incident. Jin's father is described as the strongest yet coldest man that Jin has ever known in his whole life. He has reached the level of demigod, the Genesis Knight, and is the most powerful being of his era. Jin explains that his father became obsessed with the clan's prosperity after reaching Demigod, losing all the basic and fundamental emotions that made him human in the first place. In Jin's previous life, his lack of talent in swordsmanship made him useless to his father, and he was treated as a nobody as if he didn't even exist. However, in this life, he believes that his father will not be able to ignore him because he wouldn't let the same thing happen to him ever again. When Jin enters the room by greeting him formally as the Patriarch, his father asks him what mistake the Tona brothers made in the quarrel. Jin responds, Revenge, and explains that it is his duty as a rung candle to return what they have received, whether it is kindness or hatred. His sister Mary gets excited after hearing this, as if she is looking right at her own self. Then, his father asks everyone to leave the room, except for his youngest son Jin Runcandle. As his sister leaves, she admits their brother is not bad as he has already earned a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the father. Jin's father demands he should elaborate on the power he used against the Tona brothers. Since magic is forbidden in Runcandle, as it hinders swordsmen from reaching their full potential, 
even if they continue to try their best throughout their whole life. Jin assures his father that his power is neither aura nor magic and offers to name it for him if his father does not mind as he continues to reveal his powers. The sudden reckoning makes Chiron Runcandle realize that it was the same power used by the first patriarch, the mere founder of the clan, and wonders if Jin is truly fated to be the future patriarch of the clan. As the interrogation progresses, Jin's father notices him using his abilities. He realizes that the power he uses is the same one used by the first patriarch of Runcandle, the spirit of Barasada. This realization leads his father to ponder if Jin is truly destined to be the patriarch of the clan, as no one in the clan could reach this extent of power. To help Jin better understand his abilities, his father explains that the power he uses is from Soldrit, the god of shadows. Soldrit made a contract with the first patriarch, Sir Temer, and was with their family since their house's birth. However, Soldrit disappeared soon after Sir Temer passed away. He has decided to reveal himself to Runcandle once again through Jin's capabilities. Jin is curious about the strength of Soldrit compared to his father's abilities, and his father responds that he has never fought a god, so he does not know the answer. Impressed by his son's inquiry, his father praises him and asks Jin how he plans to use his power. Jin initially states that he will use it for the sake of the clan, but his father laughs at his response and orders him to answer honestly. Because if he only focused on the betterment of the clan, he would have never been able to beat his brothers and throw them into the storm. Jin then finally admits that he wants to use his power for himself. His father finds Jin's response satisfactory and tells him he will be watching him closely from now on. Despite this warning, Jin is thrilled that his father knows about his abilities, and he looks forward to showing his father what he can do. The conversation between him and his father answers many questions as he wants to change life from how it used to be in his previous one. After this conversation, Jin receives an uncanny gift from his sister as she hands him a package filled with unknown goods. But she doesn't feel like there is a need to explain what it is to him as he will soon find out on his own. It is a phoenix heart, which he is supposed to boil and eat to increase his tolerance for fire and growth rate. Jin is astonished that his sister would give such a powerful gift to a seven-year-old boy, but he finds it only reasonable as she had achieved the name of the Madwoman of the Southern Region. He believes that this gift will allow him to summon a phoenix when he becomes a six-star magician, so he can continue to boost his ability to grow faster than his opponents. He begins to believe that even though he lost everything in his previous life, he truly might be able to summon a phoenix with his hands in this life. The Toma brothers continue to engage with Jin as dishes are served in front of their brother. They offer to help him finish the huge pot, but Jin asks for a favor. He requests that they dig a hole under the castle for him. Even though what they are doing is dangerous, the brothers agree as they will get whatever they are asking for. So they begin digging, while admitting that the youngest is truly scary when it comes down to making a judgment. Meanwhile, under the castle, a powerful man sleeps secretly in a capsule, as if someone were keeping him alive. He emits a dark aura, indicating his strength. It is unclear who this man is or why he is there, but his presence hints at an upcoming conflict or adventure for young Jin. Jin's brothers arrive in the room after completing the task of digging the hole. They demand their reward for the job, but Jin only points towards two small teaspoons as a reward, leaving his brothers angry and frustrated. However, Jin quickly heads towards the cave his brothers had dug, and using his magic, he attacks the wall, revealing a secret gate that leads to the Runcandle clan's secret library. Jin uses a special activation phrase to open the gate, which he remembered from his past life. He enters the library, which houses a collection of secret tomes or books collected by the Runcandle clan over the last thousand years. Only the clan's flag bearer is allowed to enter, making Jin's entry a secretive one. While in the library, Jin spots a mysterious man sleeping in a capsule with scales on his face, whom he recognizes as the Black Dragon Moroccan. 
He recalls that Murakan fell into a deep slumber after losing a fight against the first patriarch. But he decides to ignore the thought and looks for the secret books. Jin picks up a book from a famous swordmaster family named Kunjin and starts copying the notes as he knows going outside with them will only make him get into trouble. While copying the notes, Jin senses someone's presence and heads to the door, thinking that no one would come to the castle library at this hour. However, he finds Murekin awake and begins asking Jin who he is. Jin realizes that Murakin has not woken up in his past life and tries to act politely to avoid conflict. But Murakin gets angry when Jin calls him the guardian of the Runcandle clan and curses the clan for teaching this to people. Murakin then calms down and reveals that he got up because he smelled something nice, but was disappointed to find it was just a child wandering inside the rooms. He notices spiritual energy around Jin and realizes he is a thousand-year contractor, a title only given to people like Temur. Jin shows his powers to Murakin, who is shocked that such a young child could be a contractor. He reveals that he had made a promise to solder it and was supposed to help the person that solder it had chosen. Jin realizes that he is the one solder it had chosen. Murakin introduces himself as solder it's representative, friend, and the last descendant of the first being of Shadow. He explains that starting from that day, he will be with Jin as per their thousand-year contract. When he asks Jin for his name, Jin introduces himself as the thirteenth and the youngest child of the Runcandle family. Mirakin transforms into a dragon and promises to explain everything in detail later as he is still scrambling after waking up from his deep slumber. The conversation between Jin and Murakin sheds light on the history of the dragon and the castle. Murakin Mountain, where the castle is situated, was named after the dragon Murakin, a powerful ruler over the air area. However, he lost a battle to the first patriarch, Sir Temur Runcandle, 1,000 years ago and fell into a deep slumber after relinquishing his area. It was revealed that Murakin was not an enemy but the guardian dragon of the first patriarch, and every contractor was accompanied by a guardian dragon. However, the knowledge about Solderit and its dragon remained a mystery, as Jin discovered that Murakin was in a deep slumber. After a month, Jin asked Murakin why he fought with Temur, but he couldn't remember as it was a long time ago. Jin revealed that he had discovered that Murakin had a weakness for strawberry pies, and he came to the castle to copy the book as it would be discovered if he took it with him. Murakin was impressed that Jin could understand 30% of the book, considering his age, and that he was doing well as others were wasting their time. Jin replied that it was the least expected of a run candle, and he had to surpass them all. He then asked how much Temur would have understood, and Murakin revealed that Temur could not comprehend a single sentence from the book, but he was a skilled fighter. Murakin then revealed that Jin could become as strong as Temur, or even stronger, with the help of Solderit and his intelligence. He also promised to teach him a new technique called spiritual release, which required mastering mana release first. It would take at least two to three years to learn it, but Jin showed his talent by demonstrating mana release, which impressed Murakin. The scene then switched to Luna, Jin's sibling, who was leading a mission. One of the soldiers reported that the area had been cleared, and Luna suggested they rest for a while. She then asked what a nine-year-old boy would like, implying that she might want to surprise Jin with a gift after her mission ends. Thank you for watching, and for more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications, so you don't miss out on future uploads. Or click on the videos on the screen now. Thank you.